When other fights take place, do they just kind of ever remind you of your fights? Like maybe Habib Nurmagomedov when he picks someone up and slams them. Does <laughs> that remind you of you taking down Big Tim Sylvia or uh, just stir up those type of emotions? It's more when fans ask me about specific fights. Oh, man, I remember this fight and when you did this. That's that's kind of when I, I have those visions, when I remember those times and all, always fondly, uh, mm -hmm. well, most of the time anyway. Mm -hmm. Like that song, I, you know, <laughs> obviously that was an amazing night in Toronto. And Leota Machida was a hell of a competitor, but you know I lost four teeth in that fight. So you had a broken palate, right? I, uh, nah, the palate didn't break, no. but oh. but uh, I br knocked out all my front teeth basically, Jeez. even with the mouthpiece. So wow. he hit me with a real good shot. What's a fight no one ever brings up that you wish they would because you really enjoyed the whole process of either fighting yourself, fighting versus that individual, or something that happened within the fight that we all might have missed? Um. I don't know if there is one. Everybody brings up the first Chuck fight and the Tito fight. Uh, everybody loved the Tim Sylvia fight. Uh, those are the three that most people remember, mm -hmm. that most people talk about. Obviously, the, the spanking with Tito and then, you know, uh, I was Tim. Outstriking the striker. Yeah, Tim and, and uh, you know, as big as he was and all that. Th those are the ones people remember. Occasionally, Gonzaga, the Gonzaga fight gets thrown yeah. in there. And then the Lesnar fight, even though I, I, I did come out on the short end of that, I think it... You know, you you still count that as a win. I went in there and and I think I won the first round. If I'd have got him a little deeper, and I think I, I, things would have turned. But uh, you were chopping away. It was it was? What and he it got was. you with a punch that he's got these lunch pails. And <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was in the back of the head. Can him. <laughs> yeah. Um. Was there ever a moment in your career that you could point to where maybe you could have been pointed into onto another path? You know, somebody came in and offered you something where your life could have gone in a different direction. Um. I can't think of anything specific in MMA. I think getting into MMA all by, I mean, uh, in and of itself was, was kind of on a whim. And, you know, I got put on the alternate list back then. And they, they called me up the last minute, three-week notice, said, hey, you're on our alternate list. We can't fill the spot. You know, do you want still want to fight? And I'm like, hell yeah, mm -hmm. let's go. And so three weeks later was UFC 13. Uh, there was a that? moment when I, when I was being offered a contract by Pride in, in Pride's heyday. And it was a sizable monetary contract for that time and uh you know, i had to consider it for sure and the ufc came back uh you know they had first right of refusal and all that stuff on the in the contract that ended up making more sense for me to stay in the american marketplace and i knew you know i'd been longtime friends with henderson who'd been fighting in pride for quite a while but relatively unknown really in the, in the american market because most of his fights had taken place in Japan, and there just really wasn't a lot of crossover back then. Mm -hmm. So even though that they may have been offering me a little more upfront money, it made more sense in the long run for me to stay in the American market and stay with the UFC. And, and that could have gone a different way if I'd have made yeah. a decision to go with Pride and, and try out Pride back then. It would have been interesting.